I didn't have a PlayStation 2 or Xbox original when I was young and as a child, so I guess you can say I missed out on a good console generation. And I never played Star Wars Battlefront, the originals. My first one was Star Wars Battlefront 2015 by EA. And it was an okay game, but lacked content, no offline, no single player, which I reviewed in the past. After playing Star Wars Battlefront 1, I gotta say I'm impressed by it, even though it's outdated and clunky. It's a great game. Let's get into the review. 16 years later, Star Wars Battlefront 1, 2004. You can play the game in third or first person. How you activate it is you press the pause button, go to settings, game options, and there you go. The single player features three modes, historic campaign, conquest, and instant action. The historic campaign features both sides of two campaigns. The Clone Wars, where it's the Republic versus the Separatist Jord army, and the Galactic Civil War between the Empire and the Rebellion. Something I can show, I like how it shows scenes from the movies when you enter, like, battles from the movies, like the uh, Battle of Naboo. The Battle of Hoth, where you can tie up the uh, walkers, just like in the movie, even though I suck at it, I couldn't do it, I have no cliff of it, oh well. Or the Battle of Geonosis, where you even get to fight the Geonosis, just like in the movie. They even have a battle on Kamino, the clone's home planet. Funny, it would become an episode attack on Kamino in the Clone Wars 2008 show. And a battle on Yavin 4 in the Civil War campaign. The cutscenes are just brute tactics and some voice acting. That's pretty much it, telling you what's going on, nothing else. The objectives are all the same. To capture command posts and wipe out all the enemies. Capturing the objectives make the enemies spawn in only one area so it can be easier to kill them and once you wipe them all out you progress through the next stage you lose all your troops and die you have to restart so you pick a class of a character each time you spawn in and die this one for example has a blaster a pistol blaster and throws thermal detonators and concussion grenades. Another class includes a uh, missile, a missile launcher. There's a class that has a healing thing that you can throw. There's a sniper rifle class where you have a sniper rifle you can throw on a recon droid.
the rebel class has a wookie where it has chewie's type of weapon and some type of bomb that ha on timer that he can put down Both the clones and stormtroopers have a class where they have a jetpack and he throws thermal detonators. The super battle droids and destroyers. We all know what they do if you've seen the movies, so there's not much to say. As you progress, the levels get harder, and vehicles start showing up that you can hop in and use against enemies, and enemies can use against you, and typically, at times, you have a hero or villain, depending on which side you're on in the campaign, help you out. But it's mostly up to you. For example, Mace Windu. Or in this one, you'll have Darth Vader help you. There's maps with turrets that you can use to shoot down enemy ships or planes. Well, there's no planes, but shoot enemies from far away. even get into enemy ships and vehicles and use it against the, the AI enemies which is pretty cool you can give commands to have the AI on your side follow you hold their positions move out before I get back to the campaign Instant action is just where you want to have quick matches with friends with split screen. Yes, you can play split screen with friends on the same console. And you can pick any era and any planet, like regardless if the clones fought on that planet during or if they did not. As you progress through the campaign, it'll get harder, like I said, but sometimes you'll have less reinforcements and the enemy will have more reinforcements. What's interesting about this game is that you don't play as a hero or villain, you just play as a random soldier or stormtrooper or clone, which is pretty interesting. And I actually kind of felt that was a letdown, but I actually kind of like it, to be honest. It really puts a challenge, because if you just had the, if you had an option to play as a hero 24-7 or a villain, you'd just be using the lightsaber and force, so I'm glad. It adds difficulty and it also helps the immersion. And the final mode is conquest. I'll let my associate explain. You battle your enemy one planet at a time for total control of the galaxy. Every planet has two battlefields. You must attain victory on both battlefields to control the planet. The winner of each battle chooses where to attack next. Each world that you control grants your faction a planetary bonus that can be used to enhance your forces or to sabotage your enemy. For example, if the Empire controls the planet Tatooine, Lord Vader will assist Imperial troops by crushing rebel opposition during battle. With each victory, your faction's dominance increases. After four victories, your faction will be powerful enough to use the special bonus granted by your secret base. 
Choose a planet to destroy. The Empire can use their secret base to unleash the awesome power of the Death Star and obliterate a rebel planet completely. So in conclusion, Star Wars Battlefront is an amazing game, and I missed out playing on the online servers when I had the chance back in 2004 and before they were shut down, which I forgot to mention, you can't play online, it's been shut down. Star Wars Battlefront would later become the best selling Star Wars game at that time, and be a huge hit, which later would spawn Star Wars Battlefront 2005. Battlefront 2, which I will review soon. In conclusion, Battlefront gets a, a 9.2 out of 10 for amazing.